First Continental Artillery Regiment, Wikipedia article audio. The First Continental Artillery Regiment, also known as Harrison's Continental Artillery Regiment, was authorized on November 26, 1776 as Colonel Charles Harrison's Continental Artillery Regiment. Raised for service during the American Revolutionary War, as originally organized, the regiment comprised 10 artillery companies from Virginia. Two of the artillery companies existed since early 1776. The regiment was first assigned to the Southern Department, but in March 1778 it was reassigned to General George Washington's main army. In August 1779 the unit was renamed the 1st Continental Artillery Regiment. It continued to serve with the main army until April 1780 when it was transferred to the Southern Department. In May 1780, Maryland Artillery Companies formally joined the regiment, making a total of 12 companies. In January 1781 the regiment was reorganized with 10 companies. Furloughed in the summer of 1783, the regiment was disbanded in November the same year. Elements of the regiment fought at Monmouth, Charleston, Camden, Hobkirk's Hill, Utah Springs, Yorktown, and Combahee River. Harrison's Continental Artillery Regiment became part of the Continental Army on November 26, 1776 with Colonel Charles Harrison as commanding officer. The regiment consisted of two companies that were previously in existence. In the spring and summer of 1777 the regiment was organized in the strength of ten companies. Harrison's second-in-command was Lt. Col. Edward Carrington. The regiment defended Virginia during the remainder of 1777. Each artillery company was composed of four officers, one sergeant, four corporals, four bombardiers, eight gunners, and 48 matrosses. This differed from the organization in the other artillery regiments. The first pre-existing unit was the Virginia State Artillery Company which was authorized on January 11, 1776 and organized in the spring of that year at Williamsburg. Virginia. It became part of Harrison's regiment on November 26. Its original captain was James Innes and its lieutenants were Harrison, Carrington, and Samuel Denny. On March 19, the Continental Congress adopted the first company and authorized a French adventurer, Da Hickey Arundel to raise a second Virginia artillery company. At some point, Innes transferred to the infantry. The second unit became the Virginia Continental Artillery Company which formed in the summer of 1776 at Williamsburg. It joined Harrison's regiment on November 27. The Virginia artillery played an active role during the Battle of Gwynn's Island in July 1776. The only casualty was Arundel, who was killed when his experimental mortar burst. The regiment was initially assigned to the Southern Department. On March 13, 1778 it was transferred to Washington's main army where elements fought at the Battle of Monmouth on June 28, 1778. In that action, Carrington commanded some guns on the left flank under William Alexander, Lord Stirling. In 1778, three 106-man Maryland artillery companies joined the regiment on a provisional basis. The 1st and 2nd Maryland State Artillery Companies were authorized on January 14, 1776 and the 3rd Company was authorized on October 23, 1776. They joined the main army on November 22, 1777 as the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd Maryland Continental Artillery Companies. On May 9, 1780, the 1st Maryland Company formally became the 11th Company in the 1st Artillery Regiment and the 2nd and 3rd Maryland Companies became the 12th Company. The four artillery regiments received numbers on August 10, 1779. Two boards of generals determined that the artillery regiments of Colonels John Lamb and John Crane could not trace continuity from General Henry Knox's old Continental Artillery Regiment. Therefore, Harrison's regiment became the 1st Continental Artillery Regiment while Lamb's was renamed the 2nd Continental Artillery Regiment and Crane's was numbered the 3rd Continental Artillery Regiment. The regiment of Colonel Thomas Proctor became the 4th Continental Artillery Regiment. Henry Knox, Washington's artillery chief, planned to have four 3-pound or 6-pound cannons attached to each infantry brigade. Though Knox preferred the more versatile French 4-pound cannon, he had to abandon a plan to adopt a piece because so much ammunition and material for the other guns were available. 
The Army also maintained an artillery park of two 24-pound cannons, four 12-pound cannons, four 8-inch howitzers, eight 5-1-half-inch howitzers, and ten smaller field guns. Knox rotated the artillery companies between infantry brigades, artillery park, and garrison so the men could be sufficiently trained. He discouraged artillery duels and encouraged his artillerymen to reserve their fire for infantry targets. This tactic proved very effective at Monmouth. The 1st Artillery was reassigned to the Southern Department on April 17, 1780. Some units of the regiment fought at the Siege of Charleston in the spring of 1780. When General Johann de Kalb was sent south in 1780, Carrington accompanied his division with three artillery companies. Harrison arrived and assumed command, due to his superior rank. At the Battle of Camden on August 16, 1780, Harrison directed six artillery pieces. Two more guns were loaned to Colonel Thomas Sumter S. Partisans and ten were left in the rear for lack of horses to pull them. The regiment was reorganized to consist of ten companies on January 1, 1781. At the Battle of Hobgirks Hill on April 25, 1781, Harrison commanded three six-pound cannons and forty artillerists. At the Battle of Utah Springs on September 8, 1781, the Americans had two three-pounders under Captain William Gaines and two six-pounders under Captain William Brown. During the Siege of Yorktown in the fall of 1781, Captain Whitehead Coleman's company of the 1st Artillery fought under the overall command of Carrington. In the Battle of the Combahee River on August 27, 1782, a howitzer and its crew under Captain Smith were captured by the British. The regiment was furloughed in the summer of 1783 at Winchester, Virginia and Baltimore, Maryland. It was formally disbanded on November 15, 1783.